So our group reviewed this paper by T.H. Fong, and what they did is they used nanotopology to create a nanoscopic bed of nails out of this black silicon material in order to create a surface that can pierce and kill small prokaryotic cells while leaving larger eukaryotic cells intact in order to create an anti fouling surface. This nanotopology will prevent hospital-acquired and device-based infections because it prevents bacterial adhesion on percutaneous and implantable medical devices. We know that pressure equals force over area. So with a constant force, pressure changes with a change in area. With an epithelial cell, there is large area, so the pressure decreases. So when it is pushed against the bed of nails, there is no popping. Here we have an E. coli cell, as you can see by the cilia. The E. coli cell has a much, much smaller area than the epithelial cell, as can be seen by our scale. Therefore, with this decreased area and the constant force, the pressure increases dramatically and the E. coli cell will pop when it is pressed against the bed of nails. Oh no! The problem our group would like to address is that the majority of hospital-acquired urinary tract infections are caused by catheter use. We believe that we can mitigate this by implementing the anti-fouling surface onto the catheter in order to reduce these hospital-acquired infections. Looking more closely at the design of this reinvented catheter that would mitigate the risk of UTIs, here we zoom into the catheter surface at a nanoscale. The nanotopology would be embedded on the catheter surface to prevent bacterial growth and thus infection. So based on this, we can implement different geometries on different parts of the body depending on the healthy human cells that live in those parts of the body and the bacteria that most commonly infect those parts of the body. One thing that we can tweak around is the nail density on the surface. In parts of the body where the healthy human cells are much smaller, we would want a higher nail density so that we don't rupture any human cells. But in areas where there are cells that are have a much larger area, like epithelial cells, we can afford to space the nails out a little more. This is a model of our E. coli cell. As you can see, it has a small surface area. Therefore, the nails that it is placed on spread one micron apart, exert a high stress, leading the E. coli cell to pop. On the other hand, the model of our epithelial shell shows that since it has such a large area, the stress is distributed very evenly and therefore it doesn't pop like the E. coli cell does. So far all our research is preliminary. We still have a couple of challenges to overcome before we can have a good working model. First, we need to figure out an ideal and pragmatic spacing of nails so that can be manufactured easily and accomplish the outcome we desire. Further, in order to refine our model, we need to know the types of forces present in that area of the body and the types of cells and their properties um, and hone in on that. Lastly, um, we need to make sure if this is safe. Will it do more harm than good or is it a potential way to end such a high rate of UTIs when it comes to catheter use? Thank you.